So we built our first donut in Houdini and now we want to render this. And currently rendering in Houdini is a weird topic because for most of the time, Mantra has been the go-to engine in Houdini. And Mantra is extremely powerful, extremely versatile, but also extremely slow. It's clearly built with a large studio with an in-house render farm in mind. And also Mantra is in the process of being replaced or augmented with Karma, a new rendering technology from SideFX. However, Karma currently is still in beta and in my opinion is not production ready yet. So what I wanna do here is walk you through the steps of setting up a rendering in Mantra. Although for a single freelancer, you might wanna be looking into third-party rendering options for Houdini at this point in time, which maybe I'm gonna talk about in a future tutorial. But for now, let's set this up using Mantra. And for shading, lighting and rendering, I like to close down these tabs down here, pin my currently open tab, and then hit Control T twice, adding two tabs here. I'm gonna set one tab to my out context. That's where we're gonna set up our render engine and one tab to our matte context. That's where we're gonna set up materials, aka shaders. Let's go back to our OBJ context here where we built the donut. And in here, I want to assign three materials for our icing, for the dough and for the sprinkles. And I'm gonna do that using the material nodes. Just gonna drop this down and copy it, paste it twice. File this in below our sprinkles, below our icing and below our dough. Call this one material underscore sprinkles, this one material underscore icing, this one material underscore dough. Okay, let's create those three materials in our material context here. Let's start off with material for the glazing using what's called a classic shader. So basically, if you don't want to build your shaders yourself and building shaders yourself means building them on a really, really low level, you're gonna be using either the classic shader or the principled shader. And in this case, we're gonna use both. Let's start out with a classic shader and call this one icing. In this case, let's set the base color to some pink reddish color, maybe like this. And you can also click in here and get a full color picker with all the shenanigans. But also what you can do is middle mouse on this, holding your middle mouse button pressed, and then you get this color picker, which allows you to choose any color, not only within your Houdini interface, but also with an open browser window on a second screen or something like that. Let's undo that, control Z, and uncheck use point color in here. And for now, let's just assign this to our icing. So in our icing material node here, let's just select the material, dial down the matte context here, and double click on icing. Let's go back to our materials and set up our dough using a principal shader, call this one dough, highlight this, and maybe drag down our material parameters here. So I want to set my base color to be all white and use our point colors. So basically what this does is it multiplies our white color with the point colors that we already written on our mesh here. Next, I want to dial in our IOR, our index of refraction, to something more closely to water, 1.33. And as this is dough, the reflection is not as sharp on it. So maybe let's dial up the roughness to 0.5. And down here, I want to enable subsurface scattering, allowing for a bit of translucency, for a bit of light going through this dough. For now, let's leave it at that. Let's just take our icing material, copy and paste that, and call this one sprinkles. In here, Let's set the base color back to be all white and check use point color. And let's go to our reflect base and dial in our reflections, which I'll dial back being less pronounced now and also increasing their roughness. All right, let's assign those two materials as well. Sprinkles, let's just select this material here and the same goes for the dough like so. Save this, go up one level, back to our overall OBJ context. And down here, let's add another grid, which will serve as our ground plane. Let's just select this tool handle here and move it down a bit so it's not intersecting our donut anymore. Also, if you want to switch to the side views in Houdini, what you can do is hold down space and press two and you're gonna go to the top view Space and three will go to the front or back view and space and four will go to the side views with space and one going back to your perspective viewport. And also up here, you can switch to a four split or to just to your single view. Okay, let's increase this grid's scale a bit. Go in here, maybe add some normals up again and let's create a material for the background as well. Again, maybe just using the classic shader here, copying and pasting it. Call this one BG for background, maybe decreasing the roughness again. And in our diffuse channel, let's uncheck use point color and instead dial in some bluish color here, something like this. Let's assign this. And in here, I assign the materials to those individual geometry streams using those material nodes. However, if we just have one geometry stream, which only needs one single material, we can also assign materials on these nodes here, on the OBJ nodes themselves, under the render tab in the material slot, we can just select the material as before and select our background material. So that's assigned now. Also for rendering, we're gonna need a camera. So let's control click on the camera and this will just place a camera in my scene at my current viewport's position. Let's lock this to our viewport so we can move it around while we're navigating in the viewport. And also maybe let's add some light in here. 
So control click on the area light, which will also add a light at the current position. And now it's already selected. So let's just move this around a bit and select our camera again. Unlock our camera briefly so we can have a look at the scene. So that's my camera here looking into the scene and that's my light source. Maybe let's move this a bit closer and under the area light sources options here, let's increase its size to maybe five by five units like so, or maybe even bigger to say eight by eight units. In here, I can increase or decrease the exposure and the intensity and thus dial in how strong my light will be. Let's look at this through our camera again, save this and go to our interview and hit render. And after a while, Houdini is showing some buckets here and is trying to interactively or quote unquote interactively render our scene, which looks like this. And there's lots of issues with that scene currently. For one, it's very dark, so it's not getting any global illumination. So let's go to the output. And down here, as soon as we hit the render button, Houdini automatically created this mantra node, which is there to configure our rendering. Let's just stop the rendering. And with the mantra node selected here, let's go to the rendering tab and switch this from ray tracing to physically based rendering, which tells mantra to use the path tracer instead of the ray tracer. And under the limits, let's increase our diffuse limit to say four and decrease our reflect and refract limit to say six. Let's take a brief snapshot of our current status here and re-render this. And while this is slowly converging, I can switch between the snapshot I took and this. And I can see now I've added in some of that bounce light that GI gives me by just increasing the diffuse limit. So I added in four diffuse bounces here. However, all of this is still really dark. So let's just stop the rendering, take a snapshot again, go back to my scene and let's just maybe add a few lights by just copying this area light here, pasting it and just looking through the second area light that we just created here. So let's just move this over and place it maybe a bit to the side. Whoops, should have locked it to the viewport. This button is important here. Let's just place it to the side. So we're getting a bit of fill in here, maybe like so. Copy and paste this one more time. Again, select it, make sure it's locked to the viewport and pull this over to the other side, like so. Let's unlock it, have a look at the scene. Yeah, maybe move it down a bit, same goes for this. And maybe let's dial back the strength of those two lights here, selecting both lights we just created and maybe dialing back their intensity to five. At the same time, increasing their area size to maybe 12 by 12. Let's go back to our camera and to our render view and re-render this. Not sure if I mentioned that Mantra isn't the fastest rendering engine on the planet, but let's just compare it with the previous snapshot we took. So yeah, we brought in a bit more light in here and I think we can dial up the light intensities here. Let's dial up the backlight to say 20 and those two side lights to maybe seven. Yeah, that's a bit better. All right, let's dial in those individual shaders here. Let's go back to our materials. And I think our icing also needs a bit of subsurface scattering. That means this translucency, this translucent light coming through it. So in the icing here, let's dial this down. Let's go to the subsurface slot here and let's enable subsurface scattering. And let's select the subsurface color to be this kind of reddish pink but let's desaturate it a bit, maybe like so. And also let's decrease the overall intensity to say 0 0.7. And if it hasn't been totally obvious to you until now, you can see that Mantra is not really fast. However, it's got a neat feature. So if you click and hold your mouse button in here, you can kind of draw in where you want the buckets to be and where you want the samples to be hit. And also if you right click on this viewer here and choose sticky priority, you can just click in here and Mantra will automatically have its buckets stick to that area and converge here or maybe here. And also, let me just mention that this rendering mode is the preview mode, the quick mode. And if you don't want the buckets to be stuck around this area, you just click outside of the image. And if you want to see how the final rendering mode looks, you just click on this button and enable your final rendering. Let's just click in this area and you can see we're shooting way too few samples. We will take care of this later. Let's for now just continue tweaking our shaders and just go back to our IPR mode. And what I want to do for now is tweak those sprinkles a bit by just going in here and enabling the refraction. So instead of making them translucent, I actually want to make them transparent. So let's check that and increase their roughness to say 0.8. So they're now really, really like a sandblasted glass, which I think gives a nice look for those sprinkles. Also, I might want to dial in the subsurface scattering here a bit on my dough. So if I increase my subsurface distance here on the dough, you can see these areas will get a good bit brighter. So that's kind of a balancing act. And it's kind of up to you, the artist, what you choose looks realistic and when it starts to look comically. One more thing I like to do before I start dialing in the samples is give the dough a bit of a bump map. And for that to just speed up the rendering, I just want to go into my torus geometry and just highlight the dough itself and not the whole merge geometry. So we're getting a bit of a quicker rendering here. Okay, back to our material and I want to give my dough some bump map. For that, I'm going to use a node called the bump noise. And down here, I'm seeing the base normal and code normal. And I'll just wire in the displaced normal output on my bump noise into the base and code normal here. 
Let's move those two nodes over here. And immediately we can see our donut is now white. Well, there's kind of a debate if this is actually an expected feature or if it's a bug. However, what Houdini internally does is as soon as you pipe in low level nodes into your overall shaders, it disables a whole bunch of other features. For example, the use point color slider up here. So we'll have to manually wire in our point color to be used in this shader here, which luckily is done really quickly using just another bind as previously in our point bob to bind our CD, our color, which is of course a color and not a float. So this CD is wired into my base color now. And now I'm back at where my donut has its color back. So let's dial in the bump map here a bit. And yeah, I mean, it's a bit extreme, but for this look, I think we can go with this, maybe increase the roughness a tiny bit. Yeah, why not something like that? Okay, let's go back to our OBJ and highlight our merge node to render the full geometry again. And now let's switch this to final rendering mode. And you can see it's still very, very noisy. So let's dial in our final rendering quality, which we do under the out tab in our mantra node here. And we're going to use our sampling tab here. So we're seeing the most pronounced noise, I think comes from the subsurface. So either what I could do is just increase my subsurface quality. Let's increase it eightfold, which already is getting rid of a good portion of the noise, or I could also increase the maximum number of ray samples. So this is an adaptive sampler looking at the overall noise level in your image. And if the sampler determines that we're below the noise level, it doesn't shoot additional rays. And if it says we're still above this noise level, we shoot in additional rays until we hit this limit here. So maybe set this to, I don't know, 16. And now you can see we are really hitting a wall here because not only do we shoot more rays for the subsurface, which we dialed in through the quality, but also for the overall global quality, for the diffuse, for the reflection, the refraction. That means we are not only multiplying our subsurface samples, but also our reflection, refraction, and diffuse samples. In this case, let's go back to the initial nine maximum samples and maybe just further increase our subsurface quality to 16. And sadly, I think this could even need more samples so I'll just fast forward through my settings here and I'll dial this in here just by looking at this and dialing in my settings. And guess what? I'm back to my initial render setting somewhat because in the end I decided that shooting more rays here is just too slow for what this is for me currently. So I'd rather gonna use some denoising and post and comp to get rid of the noise in those darker areas here or here and just have a quicker converging rendering in the end. By now you might have realized why I think that Mantra is not really a fast render engine and I'm not really sure if it's suited for a freelancer or small studio environment. So that's why third-party render engines with Houdini are very popular and kind of essential currently. And that's one of the topics which I might be covering in a future tutorial. For now, let's leave our donut converging here. And if you like what we're doing, maybe want to support us, maybe gain access to more in-depth tutorials on Houdini, you might want to consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. And to all of you guys already supporting us, thanks so much. All of this is not possible without you guys. And a very, very special thank you goes out to Gearbox Studio Quebec, Important Looking Pirates, Chris Abair, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, guys.